We finally know how far along Karen is. Andy is on to Gary. And Hayden has yet to feel the full wrath of Fatima. What's good, y'all? It's your good sis, Erica Bain, coming to you right here on Erica Bain TV with another sister's video. In this video, I am breaking down episode number 13 from season four. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So the episode opens on Andy and she gives, um, well, after she has a little ridiculous phone call with Gary, she gives El Fuego a call. She wants him to sweep her apartment for any bugs or cameras because she thinks that Gary is spying on her. And it's like, girl, if you got to do all this, is the penthouse really even worth it, honey? Like, let's, let's, let's be real. Can we be real for a second or, or we can't be real? This is too much, Andy. Like you going, you doing this little coy back and forth with Gary. He knows that you tell him that Paris wasn't there last night, but then that Robin will be there. You're trying to play these manipulative ass games, and it's like for what, girl? You really got all this kind of time on your hands? Like I don't know about you, but in 2022, being a grown ass woman, having a career, being independent, having a little bit of intellect to you, being able to dress, put your makeup together every single day, stay fit, all of that kind of stuff. It takes time and effort and energy. And you running around here all prim, proper, well put together and acting like you got all this time in the damn world to be shucking and jiving with Gary's ass on the phone. And I hate that for you. And I also hate that for me. It's not given realistic. So Tyler Perry, I'm going to need you to move this Andy and Gary's storyline along because we are tired. We are tired of this back and forth dialogue where they're not actually saying anything. We're tired of Andy trying to dangle the bait as if she thinks that she has got one up on Gary all of a sudden. And she's dishing out some type of punishment for what he has done thus far and that he's going to be a changed man. So we need to go through this time with her to be able to drive home the fact of how he should and should not act in this relationship. This is a dead end, Andy. It's a dead end, honey. Turn around. Make a U-turn. Gary ain't it. But I'm not going to spend too much time talking about Andy because, y'all, in this season, I feel like she is giving lost cause, honey. She will not stop playing around with Gary. Um, she is now going to jump down the rabbit hole trying to figure out how Hayden and Gary have become so close. Apparently, she introduced them a little bit ago, but then they have met prior to that whole story of like how they actually met and how they became close. I get that Hayden might have been a client before or whatever, but that's all given sh shifty. It's giving y'all little Satan's little crafty minions and y'all have meetings every Tuesday night and you don't never miss one. And that's how y'all became BFFs. That's what it's giving. And we hate it. Aside from that, Andy just continues to look cute and be Andy in this episode. She winds up going down to see Fatima at the jail and then decides to come at Fatima and um, chastise her for doing what she did. But it's like, girl, you knew last night when she did it. You was one of the first people called from the scene, honey. So you knew that this was going down. You wasting time again and wasting dialogue again because we need to be figuring out how we're going to get this girl off and clear these charges versus you telling her that she shouldn't have did it because she already did it. And guess what? She going to do it again if she get a chance to because at the end of the day, hey, Hayden's ass deserved it. He's a damn menace. And it's unfortunate, like, the fact that sometimes women feel like they got to take things into their own hands to protect themselves or to stand up for themselves because men operate like Hayden. Little incel men like Hayden are out here running amok and wreaking havoc and then want to run to the cops and can't fight and, and, like, all of this extra stuff when all you had to do was leave her the hell alone. That's it. Like, literally, you could do your damn job, go about your day, be Satan's little crafty minion to yourself, and don't say nothing else to Fatima, and you would never have any other issues. Your daddy's ashes would still be in that urn. Your TV would not be busted. Your TV would not, I mean, your car would not be busted, and you would not have been filleted on top of the car. So, yes, I said what I said. Moving on. The most important thing in this episode for me was um, Karen going to the doctors. And when I tell you Tyler Perry spoon fed us this damn doctor's appointment and I hate it for us. Not only did the doctor come in just to say hello, 
when that is not how doctors offices be working especially in 2022 they're trying to get us in and get us out in the shortest amount of time possible so they can get the biggest premium with, with doing the least amount of work and the lady the fact that the lady comes in just to tell her that uh aaron is going to be a good a good dad and say hello but she's never met karen before this is the first time this girl has been in her actual office it's not even her same primary care or OBGYN doctor this is a completely new fucking lady and this lady comes in to say hey and to say that oh he's going to be a great dad and then oh i'm gonna go back and get the sonogram machine man can you come in you knew what i was coming in here for when they made the appointment they told you they was coming in here for so why when you come in the first time didn't you come in with this damn sonogram machine the gel and the gloves and everything that you needed to give us the answers that we needed honey when i tell you tyler perry dragged this doctor's appointment out all through the damn episode we got three specific moments where we were at the doctors the first one introducing the doctor okay cool uh, Karen and Aaron are going back and forth because he's stuck on his timeline and she's just like I already know what it is and what it ain't and da 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 and at this point I'm like Aaron we've already decided that you're going to stop arguing with this girl regardless of what she think and believe it's going to be what it's going to be and y'all will find out so having conversation about it is um stupid <laughs> It, it really just is. By the end of the episode, she winds up asking Aaron to step out after Aaron specifically asked this girl, do you want me to leave the appointment at the top of the appointment? Do you want me to wait outside? And she said, no, you can stay. But the moment she thought that this news was about to be left, then she wants him to step out. And I'm just like, Karen, girl, I have all the empathy and the grace in the world for you, but you was, you, you playing games right now, honey. You playing games. You was playing these games. Come to find out she's only four weeks pregnant, which I'm just going to have to go by the, her reaction because her actually, you know, for the doctor to tell us that she's four weeks pregnant, it does nothing for the audience because Tyler Perry does a very horrible job of basically keeping track of time with this series we have gone whole seasons that have been less than a week in in actual time so it's not really clear to me by them saying oh she's only four weeks who's the damn daddy but i'm assuming because it, uh because karen got so pissed the way that she did that the four weeks means that it's going to be aaron's baby but even that i'm so like okay i'm gonna go with it and i'm gonna say that this is aaron's baby for now but we don't really know because didn't they have sex within within days of each other so yeah i'm just gonna wait for the paternity test when the baby comes out okay all this other sh i don't really even care about i know for sure that she's actually pregnant so for all y'all saying that she was making up this pregnancy haha -ha, now she's actually pregnant she's four weeks pregnant it's gonna take us all the way to season eight just to get this baby out but hey i'm in it i'm in it to win it with you current girl you my sis so i got you and then once this baby comes popping out we're just gonna go ahead and um we're gonna dna her mm-hmm and then that's gonna be the end of that how about that hey, y'all that was all all i really cared about from this episode <laughs> fatima spent the whole entire episode in jail zach is sitting up here talking to rodeo while he puts the house together and when i tell you that zach put this house together in t-minus 60 seconds the timelines and the way time frames the way things work in tyler perry world is just so crazy but the house is put together and zach is starting to get worried because fatima's not answering her phone but fatima don't want zach to know that she got sent to jail because she don't want him to to go after hayden which is understandable because as we saw in the preview zach is going to lay hayden's ass out and then he's going back to jail do not pass go do not collect 200 dollars because hayden is the type to call the popo and this this is exactly what Hayden wants and, and Zach is going to succumb to his anger before he thinks and give Hayden exactly what he wanted. So for the most part, it was a very low key episode in my opinion. Like, um, Fatima doesn't look too worried in jail, but there are moments where she's like, damn. And, and she's like, all right, yeah, I know. And when she's talking to Andy, like it's clear that she's having a little bit of like inklings of regret, not full on regret. So it's not really clear to me if she got a plan to get out, if she has some type of, you know, contingency in place, but I'm not really stressed about it. I think that she will be out sooner rather than later. Um, this is just to add a little bit more conflict to the show. Now, going back to Zach and Rodeo, who spent a good amount of time together, while I like their little bromance and their friendship, um, a lot of people were annoyed with me saying last week that I don't like that Zach is one way with everybody else and another way with Fatima. And I don't care. I stand by what I said. Zach is the best person that he could possibly ever be when he's with Fatima. And I just want that to manifest in the rest of his life. Like, I want him to be a solid guy, whether Fatima is in the room or not, whether Fatima is in the picture or not. And whether y'all want to believe it or not, him telling 
Preston to go and date all these random women that Preston is 100% not even interested in in the slightest. It's childish, it's immature, and it's not good advice. Period. Going to make Danny jealous so that she'll want you back. How about you just go and be honest? If you really don't want to give up on Danny, if you don't want to let it go, if you want to fight for her, then you fight by showing your ass up, not by going to go pick up every little black girl that you can find in Atlanta and parading them at the 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 hair salon that that uh, Danny's friend works at, at the restaurant that you notice she like to get drinks at. Like that is all childish and stupid. And if you want to build a relationship, a healthy relationship that could potentially turn into marriage, and this is the woman that you want to be with then be straight up and also don't be afraid to be straight up and continue to show up and show out like so many people I feel and I've been thinking about doing a video about the whole Michael B Jordan and Lori Harvey thing because there's so much conversation around oh he did all these grand gestures for her and he played himself he didn't play himself because he did those things because he really wanted to do it so many people are so focused on what they get back from people or what they get out of something that they don't actually lean into doing the things that they want to do off of impulses because they're too worried about themselves if you like somebody, if you love somebody, if you want to shower somebody with praise or gifts, then do the shit. Life is too damn short for us to be running around here, holding ourselves back because what if this person don't respond this way? What if this person don't do this? Just be true to your damn self and let Jesus figure out everything else. The way that Preston is running around here with his bottom lip dragged to the damn floor, just wanting with Zach and Fatima have, meanwhile, he's not taking the steps that Zach actually took to make sure he straightened up for Fatima and that he was able to be a, a legit, dope, supportive, healthy partner for Fatima. He decides to go and follow in the bad, the, the old Zach fucking behavior versus the new Zach behavior. And, it was, and it's both given stupid to me. Like, it makes absolutely no sense. One, that Zach would give him the advice to do what he did in his past, previous lives, previous relationships. And it also makes no sense that, that Preston would actually do it. You know better than that. You're a good person. You're a sensible person. Just be your damn self. And if Danny is not in a place right now to receive the good man, the good person, the, the help that you are and that you want to be to her life, then that's just where she's at in her journey. That's it. I didn't even realize I was going to say as much as I did, but that's my thoughts on that. Meanwhile, Danny's at the damn airport getting all the feels because logan decides to free three sex trafficked kids or human trafficked kids right in front of her and of course that's gonna get all the stirrings going and i'm just like lord have mercy because she had no rap for logan at first but it's watching this man do what he do now she's all like mm -hmm, and she's smiling from ear to ear <sighs> while i want danny to be happy while i want danny to be with somebody I want Danny to find herself and find happiness with herself before any one of these guys step up to stand beside her because <sighs> sis confuses me. And before y'all uh, jump in the comment section and be talking all this noise, yes, Karen is doing something similar with Aaron. However, what I do think is that she's doing a better job <laughs> of uh well not better i'm not gonna say better because it's not for better or for worse i think that she is in the process of processing a lot she's dealing with this pregnancy she's dealing with this breakup she's dealing with this new man that's showing up and being everything that she could possibly want and it's something that's very difficult to deal with and to see especially if it doesn't come in the package that you thought it would be in so i stand beside her she was being a little simple in this episode, but I still stand beside it because hell, I have been simple in my life. My homegirls have been simple in theirs. And guess what? We still here. We still riding with each other. All right, y'all. That is my like quick breakdown for the episode because that's all it was given. Not too much. Oh, actually, I, I, can't, I can't. They spent so much time on Sabrina's ass in this episode. How I'm going to not mention her at all. <sighs> Bio decides that he wants to try to flood out the whole bank with all these damn flowers. And that's cute and all. Sabrina, you know you was being a hater about not letting Maurice take the rest of the flowers that you couldn't fit into your apartment or the bank. Because at the end of the day, like, Bio already bought them. So let Maurice have them damn flowers. That's all I could think about. Now, Calvin shows up because he got a cash a check. But he don't, but he want to talk to Sabrina to figure out who the flowers that Sabrina got is from. But she don't want, he don't want Sabrina to cash his check. Maurice can do that. Calvin, if you don't get your little goofy, messy ass on, like, what is it that you want? Showing up here like some little sick puppy dog. I can't. I can't, y'all. Like, 
the dating pool has piss in it and i ain't even gonna hold you and that's in real life and in television life because this is a this is utterly absurd do you want this girl or don't you want this girl do you care about your pride or do you care about your love for sabrina do you care about your rap or do you care about your love of Sabrina? Because the fact that he's completely missing how he acted a monkey ass fool in front of Bio the first time and how he's kind of led himself to be in this position that he's in and to basically lose his girl and can't even see that because he's too hell bent on her recognizing that his manhood was challenged and she was supposed to. Boy, uh, I can't. Good day, Calvin. Good day. And Maurice, take your goofy ass back to hell. Stealing the damn flowers off the truck. Then coming in here trying to hand them off to Maurice. Talking about some you trying to make it right. If you don't get your Ellie cat ass on. Alright, y'all. I didn't cuss so much in this video. Let me know in the comment section what you thought about this episode. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Turn on your bell notifications so you don't miss out on any of my other sisters' videos. It's your good sis E. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.